Okay, what is up everyone? Unrested back. Let's begin our new JFAC from Facebook. We start with Brianna and she says, have you ever gone to any anime conventions? Uh, I went to one and it was down in Cosmo Square here in Osaka and it was really lame. It was like the worst one I'd ever been to. But I think that's just because of the area. Cosmo Square is kind of like still Bumpkinville, so... It kind of sucked because of that. I think some of the best ones are in Tokyo. And remember, I live in Osaka. Um, if not, would you want to go? Yes, I would. I'd like to go to another one, actually. Would you cosplay? Yes, I would cosplay. I have been uh, Kakashi-sensei before uh, for one uh, anime convention I went to. Ahmed says, What Japan taught you about yourself? <laughs> what, I think he tries to mean, What has Japan taught you about yourself? And that's not necessarily his mistake. You know, Apple Correct does some weird things to your messages, I know. Any deep mental realization? Um, I've kind of talked on this many times before. Uh, Japan has just overall probably made me a much calmer person and a bigger observer of everything around me before doing anything. Um, I would say I'm more at peace with myself here. Jordan asks, what kind of uh, hanko would you recommend getting? Um, if you don't know what a hanko is, a hanko is a stamp of your name. That's what's used instead of signatures here. You use them from everything from signing bank statements to getting your first cell phone. So you definitely need one. Um, and you'll also use one possibly to seal the deal on a contract for a apartment. So I highly suggest that you do get a hanko. Which one would you recommend getting? Um, really, you can get kanji if you want to. That has kana. That'll spell out your name. But in our case, I highly suggest you just get a katakana um, hanko like I have. Mine just says sukoto. And uh, if you try to get kanji that spell out your name, I'm sorry, but some of you have quite long names if you use kanji. You even have a long name if you use katakana. So I highly suggest going with whatever makes it the smallest possible. Uh, Chance says, I know you made a video about how you came to Japan. But why did you choose Japan? Well, I kind of actually had a choice. I had a choice between um, uh, Taiwan and uh, Japan. And two different companies hired me. And the Taiwanese company, I, I researched online and they were a little bit sketchy. And uh, I thought, you know what, I'm going to go with the one that uh, seems a little more legit. And that was Nova in Japan and that went bankrupt. So. I don't know if that was the best choice, but I'm here in Japan and I love it, so maybe it was. What is skiing like in Japan if you've been? I've never been. Skiing mostly only happens up in Hokkaido. I live here in Osaka, which is not really a lot of snow going on here. Maybe once in a rare occasion there's snow. David says, I know the animation industry is big over there with anime and such. However, is it true that it's been declining rapidly in recent years? Uh, what what's like I'd like to know like what's the source on that who says that and what what is showing that like is it sales is it popularity a consensus of what sort what is the current state of animation as a whole over there I'd still say it's pretty darn popular maybe there's not as many popular TV shows I'd say probably anime movies are more popular than series um, but you've also got to remember there's some series that become popular and then kind of lose popularity for a little while and then suddenly come back even stronger than before such as like Gege Gege no Kitaro, um, even series that you guys are familiar with like Dragon Ball Z and Naruto, um, they are off and on like suddenly they're not popular anymore and then they have a resurgence of popularity with a new generation. So that's always kind of an up and down thing, a hills and valley type of thing. Watchtech asks, another tattoo related questions because I have a full sleeve. Did you ever make friends or talk to Yakuza because of your sleeve? You have not watched my video, have you, called Mightier Than The Sword. I mean, yeah, Mightier Than The Sword. It, if you haven't watched that video, go watch the one. It's called Mightier Than The Sword. And it's all about how I met Yakuza because I have tattoos. Alex says, do you have any new horror movie recommendations for your horror movie fans? Um, Black Lily Apartment. That's a new one that just came out in Japan. I highly suggest that. It's got uh, Achan from AKB48 starring in the lead role, so that should be pretty exciting. Um, is there much of a goth community in Osaka? Uh, there's like Loli Goth, and uh, there's kind of... 
There's kind of a blurring sometimes between Visual K and Goth. And if you don't know what Visual K is, you need to go look it up now. You'll understand what I mean after you see that. Um, so I hesitate to say that there's a massive Goth following, but there is a pretty decent Visual K following, which sometimes blurs into that Goth following. So if you want to consider those one and the same, which sometimes they kind of are depending on the music and what type of singer they have. So if you want to call those one and the same, then yes, it's quite popular. Evan says, do you have any plan to come back to the States for a week? Just one week? Can I stay longer? Hmm. <laughs> I, I'm probably going to come back eventually. I want to let my sons see their grandparents a little bit more. They've only seen them like three or four times. G Jesus. I'm, I'm guessing your name is not Jesus. It's Jesus. <laughs> Hey Scott, are you a fan of Shin Megami Tensei games? I am not played those at all, so I can't really say I have any kind of expertise on those. Uh, Louise asks, how are age gap marriages in Japan portrayed? Like 10 years older and over. I'm guessing they're rare, but what have you heard? They're not that rare. Um, sometimes uh, women will marry older men. Um, it's not that crazy to hear about, even with movie stars and stuff. And um, there tends to be uh, a lot of women who look for men who are solidified in their careers. And that tends to be older men, so it does happen sometimes that younger women marry older men. The reverse, not as common, but as you may know, the main star from Detroit Metal City, he was also L in the Death Note series, he married a woman who was seven years older than him, so that's kind of the reverse. And she was a movie star too. She was in uh, Tom Cruise's The Last Samurai. James asks, I had saved these questions because I missed four and five. Sorry about that, James. In another video, you mentioned that you don't really get hassle apart from crowded places when skateboarding, but about traveling on the roads and paths from A to B, how good were you on a skateboard? Oh, how good were you on a skateboard? Like in the past? Back in America during college, I was pretty good. Like, I could do quite a few moves. Um, I could probably do at least one set of stairs. And uh, I was really big into, like, doing fakey pop shove -its, um Doing everything fakey. Everything I could do normal, I wanted to be able to do fakey. And um, I never got into, like, rail grinding. I wasn't so good that I could, like, rail grind or anything like that. Um, you know, kick flip, all kinds of stuff like that. Like, uh kickflip 360 um, down one set of stairs and I had friends though who would do like two or three sets and just blow me away and so I was pretty crap compared to them um, but I was on a really small skate team once called the Outer Limits and uh, it was a really ghetto store <laughs> judging from your desk and the art and the video you made you are into tagging graffiti I do have some graffiti type stuff on my desk uh, can you talk about graffiti in Japan uh, down in Amimura there's a big graffiti culture um, is it mostly associated with Yakuza? I wouldn't say it's associated with Yakuza. I would say it's more associated with biker gangs known as Bosozoku, which literally translates to, like, rage group. And um, they're a little more common. They're kind of like the, the greenhorns of the Yakuza. Those people eventually evolve into Yakuza. So they're kind of like the little boy biker gang people who, you know, eventually join those bigger, you know, like Yamagumaguchi gangs and stuff like that. Uh, do you like chiptune 8-bit uh, Game Boy music? Yeah, I do like that kind of stuff. Sometimes you'll see it in some of my videos. Is there a lot of chiptune gigs there? Not that I know of, but I'm not that into the music scene anymore due to the fact that I'm a busy dad. I know they sell electronic cigarettes in Japan, and apparently they call them Denki Tobacco. But are they easy to find, and have you seen people using them? Yeah, I've actually seen a lot of people using them. That's a good question, actually. I do see... A lot of people recently are on a kick to quit smoking. It's finally coming to Japan that, guess what, cigarettes are not healthy. So there is kind of a big kick recently to quit smoking. They even have a new uh, problem that they've made a katakana word for called a smoker's face, which means like you get a smoker's face if you keep smoking. Japanese people seem to like high-tech toilets. Are there any fixtures or fittings that we have in the West that have been technologically upgraded in Japan? Well, I would say probably my bathtub, uh, due to the fact that it has a sensor that connects all the way through the house that you can go ahead and set a timer for a time and 
a temperature in which you want a bath to start, begin, pour out, fill up, and then stop the water. Um, the bath will let you know that it's begun by telling you in Japanese with a voice, and it will tell you when the temperature is perfect and when it's ready to actually be used, and uh, voices for that for every part of the different levels of completion. And uh, that sensor is throughout the entire house, so like you'll hear a voice no matter where you are. So if you're doing a chore or laundry or getting dinner ready and you want to take a bath right before, um, that's kind of technologically advanced. Uh, a lot of stuff talks to you in Japan. Like my dishwasher too can talk to me when it tells me it's finished. Um, anything else? Not that I know of right now, but I mean, I don't really have a lot of like cool toys around the house these days. Um, Rachel asks, how do you picture yourself retiring in Japan? Or what would your dream retirement be? Um, that's a good question. I don't actually plan to retire in Japan. I'm not going back to America, but I don't know if most of you know, but retirement in Japan is insane expensive. Um, if you're a gaijin, you're probably going to get little to no pension, especially if you never become a citizen. Um, you can get pension on a permanent resident visa, but it's really piss poor. I mean, you, you would be struggling. So my plan is to acquire more property. I already have, obviously, the house I'm living in I do own. Um, I want to acquire more property as I get older and have more money. Uh, that is working out well. I do have two more properties that are possibly going to be purchased in the next five years. And um, I would like to get a group of properties that I can rent out eventually. I don't really care if it's Tagaijin or Japanese. And that will serve as my income and I will be moving to Malaysia where my money is worth like triple from Japan. I'm not going to try and make my money stretch in Japan, it's just stupid. Malaysia, you have people who speak Japanese and English. They can help both my wife and I as we get up in your years and age and need all kinds of different help such as nurses and possibly even hourly care, depending on how long I live. <laughs> uh, Chris says, do you find more females than males are into visual K culture? I've never really taken any kind of poll or anything. I have seen more females though that seem to be into it. But then again, those females might be males with how the visual K people dress. <laughs> Hi Scott, I have another question again. How do the Japanese feel towards cyberbullying um, and bullying in schools? Well, um, up until recently it was kind of ignored, um, but it's gotten pretty bad to the point where like kids have started to commit suicide from being pushed to the edge. And now, because recently one kid was totally pushed to the edge and the parents went live with it, told the police, went to the news, went to the media. Most times schools ask them to keep totally quiet about it, which in my opinion is totally ridiculous. I don't know why you would do that. And that school got in so much trouble that they had to uh, expel students, which is super rare in Japan. Nobody gets expelled. And those students tried to go to other schools and other schools won't accept them. And those kids even got sued and have to pay the parents, which it's unheard of in Japan. Like, you know, that happens every day in America. People get sued for, you know, their flag makes too much noise or they spill coffee on themselves. But in Japan, suing is really rare. Um, this uh, also continued on into recently a, um, a boy committed suicide recently and, oh, I'm sorry, no, he didn't commit suicide. He was beat with a mop at a school by bullies and they were arrested by the police. Totally unheard of until now. So it's starting, I think Japan is finally uh, turning over a new leaf and becoming more serious due to the fact that no school wants to end up with a bad reputation like this last one did after this kid got, well, he didn't get killed, but he was pushed to suicide. What are the fun things you like to do with your family? We like to go geocaching. Do you guys know what geocaching is? If you don't, you can go look up geocaching.com. Um, you know, you pretty much find hidden treasures all over the city. Japan is like prime for all different types of urban adventure like that. Eric says, hey, I was wondering, for as long as you have been living in Japan, has there been anything over there that honestly made you go, damn, that is too much, even for me? Like festivals or customs or anything that comes to mind? Well, I, you guys probably know I made that one video about the funeral, my first Japanese funeral I ever went to. Um, when a person's, uh, how do you say, not incinerated, <laughs> when a person is, you know, how the body is burnt down. I, I don't know why I can't think of that word all of a sudden. Um, made to ash. 
like you're used to in Japan. Cremated, that's the word, cremated. When a body is cremated in Japan, they cremate it at a lower temperature to the point that only the bones are left. It's not ashes, but it's like a full skeleton. So they, they put the body in there, you say goodbye, and you wait around for a while, you say come back after a certain amount of time, everybody comes back, and they open it, and they pull the bones out. And I mean, it's like a full like science lab room skeleton. And that blew my mind. Like, I, I was a little bit freaked out. I, I have to say, I did not expect that. And then you're given um, a vase, like an urn, and a pair of chopsticks that are only for, you know, cemetery ritual. And you pick up bones that you want to keep from the person who's died, and you place them in that urn. And I, I mean, this is this has been around for ages. This was no big deal. My wife, you know, didn't flinch at all. No big deal, you know. This person who had died was, you know, up in age. It had been on the deathbed for years. It wasn't a huge surprise, so no one was like bawling or anything. But I was about to like freak out. I, I it really was. I don't want to say as disturbing because I mean, it's a tradition that I need to respect. But it was a, a very surprising tradition. Let's put it that way. Zoe says, "I'm not sure if you said this in the last few videos because there were a lot. But in your opinion, are the best night activities to do?" What, in your opinion, are the best night activities to do? I'll be spending time in Tokyo soon, but there are other cities I'd like to visit. The best nighttime activities、um, are kind of the same in every city. <laughs> you want to go to bars and clubs, and I guess one fun thing that's kind of unique for Osaka is going down to Triangle Park and just hanging out and talking to the locals because it's free and you can just like buy a conveni beer and chill out with them and you know, shoot the shit. Logan asks, Hey Scott, I really appreciate the time you are taking to answer these questions. I was wondering what kind of interactions you've had with tourists in Osaka. Have you ever been approached by tourists who need help with translating directions or something similar? Yes, I have.、Um, actually, probably multiple times at this. Probably, I mean, not a ton, but at least like 10 times.、Um, they were lost.、Uh, they didn't need translating. No one ever asked me to translate anything. But they were lost usually, or they wanted to know like, what was good to do in the area, or、um, I just saw them staring at a map. And if, if I see like, a, a big family with huge backpacks on, and they're like, totally look like they've got a screwed face, and they're looking at a map and they don't know where the hell to go, I'm totally going to come over and help them out. Because I, at this point, I know almost every inch of Osaka. It's not a massive city, I've been everywhere. You need to lend a helping hand if you've been here a while. Uh, Tamitra, that time I've said it right because I looked at your pronunciation here, Tamitra, thank you. <laughs>、um, says, I have two questions. My first is, how does Japan view androgyny? Well,、uh, I'd say Japan has a pretty open mind to androgyny. As you know,、um, the old Edo era plays、um, deal with very androgynous characters. Women play men and men play women in those plays.、Um, On top of that, you have the new half culture, which is transgenders. And transgender culture is really quite popular in the sense that some are very famous movie stars,、uh, variety show spokespeople, and hosts of entire shows.、Uh, most might know that Kenji and Iko are two of the most famous transgender.、Uh, they're pretty darn androgynous.、Um, on top of that, you've got、uh, a set of plays that are out、uh, by women who make.、Um, Modern versions of the old Edo era plays by having modern settings such as like urban noir and something like that, but still playing the male roles like they did back then, which is very androgynous. Aaron asks, Did you earn a TEFL certification? No, I did not. Any type of teaching certification before coming to Japan? No, I did not. You, you, you really do not need any of those certifications.、Um, you need your degree. You do not need certifications. Andrew asks Are professional video game players more famous in Japan than in America? Likewise, are there celebrities in Japan that are famous for something they might not be famous for in other countries? Yes, of course.、Um, video game players, not so famous here. I don't really know of any video game player who's been so famous that he's been on one of the variety shows that are on every night here in Japan.、Um, there's some famous, like, retro type gamers. Um, Shoko Tan is a pretty famous retro gamer, and anime, anime otaku, who's like a cute girl that a lot of 
other otaku boys obsess over. She's kind of an idol in that sense. Um, let's see. As far as things people are famous for that they're not famous for in other countries, well, of course, things like sumo, um, sports like that. But other things might be like... Um, I know there's one guy who... He's like one of those fork bender people, but he's also a mind reader, and he's pretty famous for that. And the way he does it is pretty unique. Um, there's all different types of talent shows, like variety talent shows in Japan that show all different types of like wild, weird talents. So to go through all of them would be too long, but there is a lot of stuff there that you would see that if you just watch Japanese TV, you'll see stuff that you'd be like, wow, I've never seen that in another country. Harrison says, what is your view on otaku and their lifestyle? Is it something new to Japan because of how business is changing? Um, it's not really that new. It's actually a pretty old thing. I'm sure most of you probably know the Denshin no Otaku movie where, you know, the man who saved a girl who was harassed on a train by an old man and he was an otaku and they fell in love via Nichan. Um, that is a pretty old story. And that after that is when otaku started to become very famous. But after the Akihabara stabbing, otaku kind of got a bad name. I don't know if you guys know about that, but there was an otaku down in Akihabara who uh, drove a car, hit a bunch of people, jumped out of the car and started stabbing people. And then uh, he was just crazy. He wanted to be arrested and be killed by the police. It was his like suicide dream. And um, after that, they've kind of got a bad name. Slowly, they're starting to go back to uh, being of normal popularity, but not, I wouldn't say they're anything like big right now. Everybody's an otaku of something is kind of Japan's theory at this point. You can be a non-toka otaku. Like just saying otaku doesn't mean anything. It just means like mania. So if you say I'm an otaku, they'll be like an otaku of what? So a lot of, I'd say a lot of English speakers use the word otaku incorrectly because you would say like Gundam no otaku. I'm a fan of Gundam or Pokemon no otaku. You are a fan of, Gun of Pokemon. So if you use it correctly, you'll actually have nantoka no otaku. Daniel says, hey, Scott, how are vacations, I'm sorry, vaccinations viewed in Japan? Are there any vaccinations that are mandatory for foreigners to get? I don't remember having to get any, but I think there was like a checklist of ones I had already had. Do any company organizations force employees to get vaccinations? Some force you, well, I don't know if they force you, but they want you to get a flu shot and they'll even give it to you for free. If there are no mandatory vaccinations, do they promote and push them on people like they do in North America? Um, there's a set of nine vaccinations that every child gets. They have to get those. Uh, Kevin says, what is your thoughts on helping people, helping people English through text chat? Do you mean like learn English? <laughs> What is your thoughts on helping people learn English through text chat or video chat? Uh, text chat, I think, would be pretty useless. I mean, unless you only wanted to learn how to write. Um, I think video chat's pretty good, but you better have a pretty good mic and a pretty good connection because the fidelity of your voice could be highly corrupted. I'm just saying, talking on the phone in Japanese and talking on the phone in English, both are very difficult for people who are non-native speakers. Uh, what would be your suggestion for helping people with English online? Like I just said, have great fidelity. Speak slowly. James Lowry says in Japanese, this is in, you can see, in Japanese. Nihon no naka de o kini hairi no mono wa nan desu ka? I meant to say, what is your favorite thing in Japanese, but I'm not sure if I said it right. I think, were you trying to say, anata no skina mono wa nani? Is that what you wanted to say? Because what I just read there doesn't translate into what do you like? It's kind of like, what is the feeling of enter the Japan object? <laughs> like, that's, I'm sorry, I think I'm pretty sure, maybe you just chose the wrong kanji. In his defense, there's auto select on kanji, so it might have changed it for him. Uh, oh, here he says, my sentence probably strucks, but yeah, constructive criticism would be cool. Yeah, you should just say like, skina, skina mono for what you like. What I really want to know is how good are you at 
reading Japanese, writing Japanese, and speaking. I will say my number one skill is speaking Japanese.、Uh, I can speak way better than I can read or write.、Um, my reading and writing is pretty crap. There was a point where I studied up to 2,000 kanji to take the JLPT. I now remember probably like 300 kanji, and that's about it. I can't read very well at all. Jesse says, Have you had anything paranormal happen to you while you lived in Japan? I have, but I'm going to save that for summer horror stories. Al says, Scott, we know that Japan is a very conservative nation. Do you see it changing? Do you think it ever will? What do you wish would change? I don't see it changing for at least another 50 years at the quickest.、Um, do I think it will ever change?、Mm. Yeah, maybe. Maybe if they have a revolution or get desperate enough. What do you wish would change? Honestly, my honest opinion, I wish, and I don't just wish this for Japan, I wish this for South Korea, China, and Japan. Quit fighting. Quit fighting. World War II was a long time ago. Stop fighting. You're all babies. You're all being babies in the sandbox. And nobody likes bullies and babies in the sandbox. Be nice. Be nice. Share your toys. By the way, Kiari Pamu Pamu is coming to the Bay Area and she is giving a mini concert for free. <laughs> On a lighter note, <laughs> Seth says, What's your favorite Arnold Schwarzenegger film?、Um, I don't know how that's a J fact. I like The Last Action Hero. Daniel says, Have you ever been to Takayama? No, I have not. I heard it's a good place to visit for Gaijin. All right, that might be. You said, Eric says, You said in a number. For that, only a small percent of foreigners who say they are going to Japan actually make it over. Why do you think that is?、Um, I think a lot of people get excited about Japan and want to go to Japan and would love to go to Japan and are super stoked on Japan, but they don't save the money, they don't do the groundwork to make sure of what they can do, where they can go, what's good for them, how much things are there. Um, they don't realize how much time it takes to get there. They don't realize how costly buying just things like food there are.、Um, or they just get overwhelmed with all those combined.、Um, there's a lot of reasons, man. I think everybody's is a little bit different. I don't want to blanket statement every single person's reason for not coming.、Uh, I also think there's a lot of people who have like pipe dreams. I can't tell you the number of time I've gotten.、Um, Tons of high school kids, and there's nothing wrong with high school kids. I was a high school kid, and I enjoy all my high school children viewers, <laughs> high school teenage viewers, sorry,、um, who send me messages. They're like, Can I work in Japan?、And、I'm like, Well, sure, yeah, what, you finished college? No, I'm a freshman in high school.、Um, no, like, finish high school, dude. Just, just finish high school, man, and then think about college, and then think about Japan if you really want to move here. If you want to visit, that's cool. So, do you know anything about homestay? No, why would I know about homestay? That's for high school kids. Like, I haven't been in high school for, since 1998. That was the last time I was in high school. How would I know about your high school's program if it even has a program? If you were really, really interested, you'd research it yourself. You'd do this thing called Google it. So, I think that's a lot of the problems, too, is people just want this magic bullet that sends them over here that. I asked Scott for a little bit of information and he says, You just call up the visa place and say the secret password, and they say, Here's your trip and some extra money for buying all kinds of fun stuff you want. That's, that's kind of a problem for me. Carlos says, You probably answered similar questions before, but I heard stories of people getting lost in train stations and ending up on the women's cart. Have you ever had a similar experience? I have had this. It wasn't because I got lost. There's this problem, right? You're rushing to get to a train, and you're running down the stairs, and you see the train door is about to close. You run, you dash, you jump, the doors close, you look around, and the train car is pink inside, and you're like, gosh, that's weird. Why is this pink, and why are all the women in here staring at me? I must be super handsome, or I might be in the woman's train. But it's no big deal. You just open up the deal, you open up the car door to the Next card over and go and just move out of there.、Uh, if you have a kid, though, if you're a man with a kid, most of the women really don't care. Like,、I'm, if I have a small kid and I'm with my wife, they know I'm not there to grabby, grabby, you know? 
Ingrid says, hey, Unrested, I noticed you had a collection of Naruto toys. I wanted to know if you are a fan of Naruto. No, just the toys. <laughs> yeah, of course I'm a fan of Naruto. Uh, Patrick says, which is better, manga or anime? I think that is a personal choice. Um, in my own personal choice, I would say I prefer most manga over anime. I'm more of a reader than a watcher. Ichiro says, you mentioned before that if you learn Japanese, your Japanese will sound like the person who taught you. Are there different types of Japanese accents? Yes, there are. There's Kanto Ben, there's Kansai Ben. You should research dialects. It's pretty simplistic. What are your top five Visual K bands? I'm not that into Visual K, so I don't really have any. And if you are a fan of Monster Hunter, can you give us an update on Monster Hunter 4? Sorry, I don't know anything about I know what Monster Hunter is. I know the game. I'm just not really that into it. Tammy says, hi. What do you think about the Japanese daycare system? Well, it's overcrowded. There is not enough room for kids. There's a lot of problems with it being super expensive and not enough teachers work it because their wages are too low. And the government is doing little to nothing about it. It's a shame. James says, many metal bands I love come from Osaka, Durian Gray, Cross Faith, to name two. Do they have any publicity there? Well, I mean, they're a little bit popular uh, or is the idea of a hometown being special not really a feature of Japanese culture? Like, they're not that po If you tell people, I really love Dury and Grey, they'll be like, hmm, okay. It's like if you told people that you liked Green Day in America, they'd just be like, oh, all right. Like, I'm not that excited. Do you have plans on ever visiting Tohoku? Not as of yet. Ben says, I recently imported the new Naruto DVD, and it cost me 3,000 yen. That's about 30 bucks. And I was wondering if it would have cost me less if I had bought it in a store in Japan rather than getting it online. Also, after shipping it, it cost me 9,500 yen for one DVD. Well, I, if you knock off the shipping cost, yeah, of course, it would only be about 2,500 yen, which would be about 25 bucks. Dennis says, have you ever dated one of these gaijin-loving girls? E yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm a gaijin and they loved me, so does that qualify? Tony said, I'm coming to Japan to study language and music. I would like to busk in my spare time, but I don't know how you would look upon that. Busk? B-U-S-K. Can somebody please explain to me what is busking? Because I don't know what that is. Crystal says, how do individuals act when one farts? Because the country I am in makes such a big deal of it, and they especially blame others for their own flatulence. How do Japanese females act if their boyfriends are admiring other women? Okay, okay, let me answer the first question. Farting is not such a big deal in Japan. Neither are stomach or bowel movement problems. And don't be surprised if you go on your first date in Japan and a girl totally tells you about her diarrhea. That's, like, not a big deal. How do Japanese females act if their boyfriends are admiring other women? It's the same as any other country. Some don't care, some are super jealous. Oh man, another name that I don't know how to pronounce. Dushika Yuki. How do you feel about Visual K subculture? Wow, this is like the third Visual K question. It's okay. I don't have any problem with Visual K. I just don't really, I'm not that into it. Ben says, Scott, can you think of any J-pop groups that are good, that are not as well known on an international level? Um, I think Momo Iro Clover is not really as well known and I really like them. Um, also maybe Dream 5. Um, oh, and what's the other one that did Never end Ending Story? Uh, something Girls. Oh, well. Well, some AKB type band just did a Never Ending Story cover, and it was pretty good. Uh, Crystal says, hey, Scott, I'm studying to be a psychologist. How are they viewed in Japan? You need to go watch my Dark Side of Japan video. Do you think race affects the number of gaijin that come there? Like, what do you mean, race? Like, the race of the gaijin or the race of Japan? That's a very vague question. Do you think race affects the number of gaijin that come there? Like, what your race is, does it affect if you come there to Japan? Uh, I mean, sure, yeah, because you're not Japanese. I, I'm, you got to be more specific with that one. Amy says, I know you mentioned the lack of breakfast cereal in another JFAC, so I was wondering if there's any way for people to have breakfast cereal sent to me. Yeah, it's called mailing it, but number one, you might run into customs problems since mailing food can be a problem. And also, it would be so damn expensive and probably so smashed and crunched that it would not be worth it. 
Uh, Zena says, I know Western or European cell phones don't really work in Japan. Really? Because my mom's iPhone works here and it's from America. So I was wondering, since I'll go to Tokyo in August, whether my iPhone would at least be able to get internet access. Yeah, it should be. And my mom's iPhone and my mom's iPad had fine internet access. Hi, Scott. Thank you in advance for your reply. Orthodontist, having teeth work. Is it cheaper than the States? Yes, every kind of medical operation ever in Japan will always be 100% cheaper. Well, not 100% cheaper, but it would be way, way, way cheaper in Japan. Um, Jake says, hey, Unrested, I have been watching your videos for a while, and I really enjoy them. Thank you. Uh, my question is, I'll be in Japan in about six months. I should bring a gift for my host family. I was wondering what I should bring. Um, cookies. Why don't you just bring some cookies, like some, like, uh, gourmet cookies. That's like a pretty decent present to give here in Japan. Ryan says, I know in Western countries like New Zealand and America, there's a large drinking culture in high schools. How about Japan? Not so much. If you have time to drink in high school in Japan, you probably won't be going to college at all because here in high school, you study, 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 study for entrance exams. Nina Belladonna asks, do you like Hatsune Miku? I don't know who that is. Uh, the whole Japanese... Oh, Vocaloid! Oh, Vocaloid! I like Vocaloid. Is that her name? The green hair girl? They, she actually has a name. I just call her Vocaloid. I'm sorry. Um, there is a small niche popularity here, and I know she is huge in Japan and in commercials and advertising. But how popular is she in mainstream Japan? She's pretty darn popular. I mean, she's got that hologram concert that goes all around Japan. And that thing is freaking awesome. Have you guys seen that? You should look up uh, Vocaloid hologram concert on YouTube. It's pretty amazing. Um, what, uh, have I, have I ever wondered what your life would be like <laughs> had you never gone to Japan? I think it would suck if I hadn't gone to Japan. I would imagine the challenge of living there has caused you to grow as a person in so many ways. Just wondering if you had anything personal to share with us about how Japan has shaped you inside and out. Nina, your question is the last one. I'll expand my answer a little bit for you. How has it shaped me and changed me? Japan, I would say, in general, has made me a better person, a calmer person, a more relaxed person. Um, I've also learned how to deal better with living in close proximity to not just people, but all different types of amenities around me. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing or a good thing. It's uh, something you learn to deal with. Um, how has it shaped who I am? Well, I think it's really shaped my opinion on my own country quite a bit. You don't really know what your country looks like until you take a trip outside of it and then look back inside. I'd say my view on America was a bit twisted. There was at times where I, you know, would slam America and, um, you know, talk about how much things suck there or how things weren't fair. But what I've really come to learn after traveling quite a bit, I've been to quite a few countries, and I've lived in this one for you know, almost seven years now. Every country has its problems, and every country has really good things about it. Um, and I'd say America really isn't that bad of a country as everybody tries to make it out to be. I would say what there is a lot of is jealousy um, for the awesome aspects of America. But I will say what there is also in America is a problem with people not knowing what life could be like if they adopted other countries' um, morals, ways, traditions. And um, there, there's a fine balance with everything, and that's one thing Japan has really taught me. And um, I think that's something that could be taught not just in America but all over the world. And I think it's something I've really learned to live with, is having a fine balance in every aspect of my life. Temperance in everything, and even temperance in temperance. Um, I think that's the most important rule Japan has taught me, temperance. With that said, I'm going to end it here. That was the next JFAC 6 for Facebook. Thank you all again for your questions. Let's keep this going.